break it all down right now. Jason Narvi. Wow! Funny you should ask. 
For those of you who haven't asked, which is very funny because I walked around the freaking Shiner all weekend, I call it a Shriner. Mm. Uh. Here's the thing. When you take something like an eyeball and you add to it something like a bulk, <laughs> and you put the two things together, Get, um, we'll say amorous, meaning we beat the living, is there children here in the room? The shit out of each other whenever we can. That is funny to us. And what we have noticed is that we are the only people in each other's lives that can routinely uh, cause and inflict physical harm on one another. <laughs> and like it. And love it. <laughs> oh, for God's sakes, I thrive on it. I mean, I don't know if any of you, you know, are cutters. But sometimes we hurt each other because it's a touchstone, right? Yep. It's a thing to remind us that we're really living. Yeah. And it's the pain is a pain. good thing. And what it does is it actually kind of forces the other person to be our personal cutter, is what it does. Exactly. I want to feel pain. So I'll put Paul. Exactly. And then Paul will because say, it's like a bank account. You know, you make a deposit, you know it's going to come back later, and it's going to happen when you least expect it or want it to. And there's a sweet, sweet element to that. Oh, Lord. I don't know. I think it's just because we were bored half the time. Oh, it was. It and when you're working like 16-hour days or whatever, yeah, let's beat each other up again. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Pretty much. People always ask, do you guys study martial arts? Well, if you're going to be in the hallway with people like him, and then, of course, people like Jason Frank, you learn to defend yourself. Jason David Frank. Oh. Ah. Yeah, he's good. He's a good. He's one of the good ones. He's a great one. Yeah. All right, so what questions are we going to ask today? What do you guys want to hear? By the way, Paul Schreier is only going to be here for another, oh, ten minutes. I got an aeroplane. Oh, oh I know. Because oh. I'm leaving on a jet plane. My fat ass is going away. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lewis. Sorry, the people are going to go. Oh, welcome to Coach. Yeah, this is economy. <laughs> yeah. I flew this way to Asia one time. 17 hours in economy of like two little Chinese room next to me going, Will you go touch me? Will <laughs> <laughs> you try and touch me? <laughs> this is kind of fun. Now, Paul Schreier, as you know, did uh, a season of Power Rangers Samurai. Two, two seasons of Power Rangers Samurai. Give a round of applause. Zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> Now, when Paul did this, he already had a full time, really cool gig going on back in Los Angeles. So, so I will talk no more about it, aside from the fact to say that he could only go and film uh, Samurai on a very tight schedule. He's like, dude, I've got two weeks, and then i got to be back in L.A., and then i got to... So he was flying back and forth on a regular basis. And when I finally got to shoot one episode of it, Paulie's like, okay, Art, this is what you're going to do to get yourself on New Zealand time. Wake up, come off that plane, and be ready to shoot the moment you roll off the plane. Paulie, tell him if you're back. Jameson, Irish whiskey. <laughs> At what time would you ingest the Jameson before getting on the plane? Well, you would drink as much as possible before you boarded the 10 p.m. Los Angeles flight for New Zealand. And going across the international date line, uh, it's a 12-hour straight flip on the clock. So, in the land of traveling and crossing the date line, this is one of the kindest trips. Because you get on the plane, you go to sleep, you wake up, and you're there. Now, of course, the calendar says that it's a day later, but it, it ends up working perfectly. So, and, and, and how did you find it? Did it work? It worked. I mean, Paul, it's like 10 o'clock, you're going to drink, you're going to have yourself two glasses of whiskey in the lounge before you go, okay? They're going to get on the plane, they're going to ask you if you want a glass of wine. Take it. We'll take that glass of wine. But now, they're going to ask you for your dinner. Do not get the full dinner. Get the light dinner. It'll be a soup and bread. Leave aside anything else. Take the soup and the bread, and you can have one glass of whiskey with it. Afterwards, they'll ask if you want an aperitif. Take the aperitif, and then, you, then at that point, when you order the aperitif, take one, one Benadryl. And then have that whiskey and wash it down, and you will sleep for about four and a half hours, just in time to land for them to offer you breakfast. Refuse the breakfast, but have a cup of coffee before you get off the plane. I mean, like, he had this down to, like, what minute I should do what. <laughs> what a pro. Okay. Dude, I had so many frequent flyer miles. I, it was like 12 trips to New Zealand in seven months. 
Yeah, I mean, at LAX, they were like, ah, you coming back, ah? Like, you gotta go to court? Like, what, you got a problem? Like, no. I'm an actor. I think, I think they thought I was like a smuggler or something. Because they did jack me up a few times, and then after like a fourth time, they're like... Alright, so we'll throw, some, throw it out to you guys for some questions. Work right over there. So, when you were in Samurai, you know the reason that you didn't interact with the Rangers? <coughs> uh, yeah. And you just heard it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. The reason why I didn't interact with the Rangers is because I could not, I could not, I wasn't going to quit a great, fantastic position at a wonderful company to go play ball again. Not, especially not something I've been building for seven or eight years. So, I think, you know how domino, you know that domino thing, right? Yeah. One thing, be, when, you know, one thing leads to another, like, you can't be there for six months to shoot like we used to shoot. That means you can't really be integrated into the A storylines because you're not around enough for them to have you in the shots, because that's what it would take. So, I mean, it was cool to do it, but my own scheduling issues dictated the writing and what they could really do with us. And uh, it was marginally successful. There were some moments that were very funny and worked, and there were other moments where you're just like, A, why aren't they in the scene? Or B, why did they even try and put them in the scene? Yeah, that, I mean, one was yeah. Yeah, that was cool. I, I love the dojo stuff. That, that was super funny. The Christmas episode is very funny. You know, there's a there's a few of the bits that are very humorous. You know, I love the last scene, you know, in, in Super Samurai with Jason. But there was other stuff where I was like, I'm a 42 year old man, I'm sleeping in a garage with a 20 year old. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a good time to me. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, so obviously I did have to kind of re rethink my character and be more be, be more parental, you know. Or more punitive, you decide which. <laughs> that was weird going back to the characters. How did you first bite into, okay, how do I go back to both? Um, you know, I mean, I've said that, told the story before is that they were they were trying to find young guys to, you know, to do Bulk and Skull like characters, and they didn't have a lot of luck finding big guys in that time frame, so they asked me to come in and help with their casting session, their callbacks. So I was like, okay, you know, LA studio job, I'm going to be cutting out this afternoon to go over to Iris Hampton's casting workshop and to sit there in a suit and watch kids geek out one by one as they walk in and realize that they're being called back and I'm in the room or whatever. Like all the big guys are like, oh god, oh god. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like Chris walking in and they're shattered. Like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, I mean, what was it like the first time like, you got the script and you're like, okay, how do I be this guy again? Well, I mean, thankfully it was written somewhat Per, per, you know, I, I oh, was, right. we were not peers, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I did try to pull it back to a peer relationship a little bit here and there, just because when you're morons, right. there's kind of like a, you know, universal, yep. you know, acquiescence to yeah. other morons, you know, yeah. you know, you're an old moron or a young moron, it's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it, it, was, it was written in there, it was okay. written. and then other times it was not, and we kind of had to put it in there. And you know, Felix is no Jason Narby, unfortunately. You know, and he I mean that's a tough act to follow, man. So I think he did a good job trying to differentiate himself and, and he's doing a lot of acting work now and he's very happy good. to not be doing it that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. It's like here, here's a guy they're gonna imitate. By the way, the person knows him better than anybody else, they're gonna be staring at him every day on the set. Go! <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's terrible. I don't want I went back to look at the characters, it was weird because it was it was funny to me how much in my brain that they were still in their early twenties. Like they were young people, especially Skull though. Skull is a, he's a child, he's a, a man child, I'm, I'm sure until he's eight. So to look at that and say, wait a minute, I'm not that age anymore. Yeah. But the character still kinda kinda is. Totally. That was weird. That was freaking weird. That was the first time I looked at myself and said, Okay, I can oh my god, I'm old, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, definitely there's been, uh, recent testing indicates that lead levels in the Angel Grove water supply are very, very high. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hangs out at the juice bar and we like it! <laughs> okay, next! We got uh, one there and one there. I want to know, how did they fix the building in Angel Grove so fast? <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, I think this is 
like, when Skull came back to Filthy Rich, I'm like, okay, he did one of two things. He sold real estate in Angel Grove. Uh-huh. <laughs> he sold disaster insurance. Okay? <laughs> and the other guy the water, I'm like, you really need to cover this building. It's going to pull down on you! <laughs> okay, kid, there you go. He's the only guy in town. <laughs> Next. Yeah. Um, first of all, all of first questions on that uh, special project, even though you can't tell us much about it. I just want to know this. Um, is it a long-term commitment where you might not be able to think about going into any other future Power Rangers shows, or no, is it just a short-term? No, no. I mean, it's a long-term commitment simply because I'm committed to it. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm working with some of the top artists in the world every day, and we're doing amazing licensed character-based art. Sometimes fine art, sometimes consumer products and collectibles. I mean, you got to remember, it's, it's like anything. You move on in your life. You, you, you said that part of the chapter's passed, and then something comes on. You know, and then pe- people would say, hey, would you guys go back to it? Would I go back, would we go back to it? Would any actor go back to it 20 years later if they didn't have a new life, if they didn't have a new job, if, if, if? It's sort of like swingers, you know? The, at the very end, you know, he's gotten with Heather Graham, and then his first girlfriend finally calls him back. It would be the same thing. He'd be like, ah, Heather Graham, why would I go home? You know? Just like Swingers. Just like <laughs> Next! Yes. What's up, man? Have you ever thought of having the costume designers make you a Halloween costume? Uh, for us to wear or for someone to wear to look like us? <laughs> for you to wear. Well, I, 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 I borrowed my samurai costume from Power Rangers Samurai, so I, I own it. <laughs> That's going to Burning Man with me next week. <laughs> Again. <laughs> So I mean, really, the costume designers, honestly, that work on that work on Rangers in New Zealand recently, and the ones from back in the day um, in Valencia, those people make costumes every day of their lives. And so when their friends would ask them around Halloween time to help them with costumes, they would be like, <laughs> it's like it's like asking a cook to make you a sandwich after he gets home. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first Halloween after the show, like. Uh, uh, who was it that was doing Warrior with me? It was, uh, oh, Blondie. Um, Blondie? Uh, son of a bitch. Anyway, she said, hey, hey, do you want me to lend you some costumes? And she's like, going to give me the Blue Ranger costume and a couple of the putties and stuff like that. And the show became huge. And she's like, uh, maybe I should. <laughs> that, was so, that was hilarious. How, little we, how far we thought the show would not go. Yeah, I think I think Warrior of you want. Take a dr- the producer's car if you want. He's not <laughs> fun. Those, those bloody costumes, you know they were just great wetsuits in the first yeah. season, right? Yeah. It would be funny to hear stories of how long it would take for them to drop from heat exhaustion on set. <laughs> they would go out to Vasquez Rock, you know, that famous location where everybody would shoot in Star Wars or Star Trek, rather. <laughs> Asshole. Oh, man, I, I, I love this con. <laughs> Hey, you! Get out of here! Hey! <laughs> I made break people like you. We were we were in uh, we were in Houston a couple weeks ago, and there were these dudes that oh. were dressed up like the Mario Brothers. Okay, Super Mario, and they had a, one of their buddies had like a 300 watt guitar amp strapped to his ass, and he was them around. And the guys, there was a computer on top of the guitar amp, and he had literally they had the sound effects from the game. Wow. And they were just running around and doing it. And they were tripping balls. They were talking to him and they're like... Uh, down the street 
from uh, where the Rangers was filming, because it Rangers was filmed in Culver City the first season. Culver City is old Hollywood. You watch old slapstick comedies, actually they're always filmed in Culver City. And there was a, a, a fencing studio that had been there for like since the Errol Flynn days. Yep, and it was in the Helm in the Helm Hellman's Bakery. Oh, bakery. Yep. Yeah, and Paul went in there and Polly bought a giant two-handed broadsword named Paula. And I went and I brought myself bought myself a fencing epic. So we were really into fencing and stage combat. But that was the first splurge I remember doing. And I remember saying, oh, I don't know, dude. But I was like, Nar! Dude, we're making a hundred dollars a week. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't not afford to do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, granted, it was the 90s. <laughs> so yeah, that's, like, that's like $400 now. I mean, a year. <laughs> I'm not a just shut up! <laughs> Definitely an English major, for sure. <laughs> English. English. <laughs> Next! Any questions, friends? Gentlemen right there with the big hair. Romans? I'm just gonna grab a photo of me and you guys, and that's it. That's not a question! Go. That's not a question! That's not a question! May I take what? a photo? May I take sure. a photo? Sure! Any people? Any people? Any people? Any people? Any people? Any people? I'm an English major. I understand. Oh, wait. It's a selfie? What is that? Okay, wait a minute. Uh, Frank, Frank? No, next! <laughs> Your first car. 
My first car, 1968 Mercury Cougar named Marilyn. Nobody can open it but me. <laughs> Driver at a dealership in the Thousand Oaks, California. Next! Yes! What did you think your last Power Rangers paycheck on? My last Power Rangers paycheck. Oh, hang on, let me think about that. Rent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Your opinion, hottest Power Ranger? Uh, hottest Power Ranger? Yeah. Uh, I'm like David Yost. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was like a good looking dude, man. He's like all chill. He's like, hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, Captain Sutherland, I guess. Nikia Maurice is gorgeous. Uh, they're all pretty beautiful. They're prettier than me. That's for damn sure. Uh, Patty, she's the. Uh, Steve Cartinez is smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, I've become a sucker again for a for, uh, for streetcar named Desire, but of course because, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of the early Brando. When you watch, when you guys, like, you know how you watch old movies, and you watch old movies and they're doing old movie acting? Say, don't you see, see? I love you, don't you understand? But Johnny, how can you love me? I have so many problems here. That's okay, Tux, you come with me. But every once in a while you watch an old movie star, and you'll be like, holy shit. They're really good. They could be acting today and they would look like a modern actor. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Marlon Brando in Streetcar is one of those guys. Brando is one of those guys, I gotta tell you too. Um, so I guess I'm a streetcar fan right now. Although although I did one called the Ganadius Roll Line a few years ago. Uh, Ganadius Roll Line is about two old ladies who sit on the front porch in swings because it seems to be some kind of sexual stimulant to them, uh, smoking pot all the time, and I played a blonde haired blue-eyed Indian named Indian Joe, and I came out in red underwear, and all I was, my only line was, POW! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lake Tennessee Williams is some weird shit. Okay, next, yes! Favorite weapon? Favorite weapon, real or imaginary? Real, no, no guns. No guns. Oh, oh, uh, my favorite style is certainly rapier and dagger. That's for sure. That's my favorite style of fighting. I will say that straight up. So next, yes. How would you prep yourself for um, the world? I'm just being honest. But how would you prep yourself for for playing skull? You mean? Um, uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, okay, this sounds ridiculous. Okay, uh, Paul and I talk about being technical actors. Uh, you know what the uh, technical actor would be? In other words, you plan I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and then you do it. Boom, 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 and boom. But I just come from the Strasbourg School. Okay? Lee Strasbourg School is uh, a derivative of Stanislavski, blah, 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 blah. In other words, it's the kind of thing where you have to emote and feel everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great word for skull, does it? But what it does do is it, it teaches you to uh, relax your body so that one way when you want to react naturally and organically, you can't do that. So I would do Stanislavski, uh, uh, Strasbourg warm ups occasionally. They, the breathing and all that stupid stuff, and then you do this one thing, you have to get tension out of your body, so you relax your whole body, and when you find tension in your body, you go, you move it, and if it doesn't move, then you breathe, and if it doesn't work, then you make a noise, <laughs> and then like, when I was in class, I saw some people that were like, really angry, and so I started doing the same thing that the angry people would be, which would be to swear, and like, BANGS IT, <laughs> KILL YOUR MOM, <laughs> I would do that too. Uh, when, I actually, when I had to do skull again a couple years ago, that was weird to me because I realized again. I told you I realized I was old. <laughs> uh, I still move the same way, but I was different. I'm a different body style than I was. I mean, I weighed you know a buck twenty back then, and I weigh a buck sixty-five or seventy now. You know, so I had I, I had, and I also people always ask me, can you do the skull lab? For first Morphicon, I had to reteach myself how to do that. Which is, it is a derivative of the Amadeus lab, for anyone who doesn't know that. <laughs> you know, um, I can't quite do it anymore, because over the past few years I've been doing Shakespeare, and he kept me doing Shakespeare like this, to me and not to me, and that's a question. <laughs> but it's just no one of mine to suffer the slings and arrows about it. And there, I think I'm going to see a jump my opposing end. Yeah, end them. Um, so, you know, I had to do the long, you know, deep, oh, it's true, true, solid flesh. So I had to actually, for... I don't re really have about a month or a month and a half to prepare. I had to reteach myself to talk in the upper register like Skull did. And then I, I think it was two months, and then I like changed my workout where I wouldn't work with weights. I would do like jogging to try to get slim like Skull again. But 
that never happened. I told you a lot ago. So, good question. Next! Four! Yeah, I did. Um, I learned a little bit. Uh, uh, Epic was my was my weapon of choice uh, when I took uh, fencing lessons. Uh, but I also did saber for a very short time. This was a really funny. When we were in Australia, we had so much time to kill. I actually started taking fencing lessons with this guy named Angelo Santangelo, and he was one of these things. Okay, here's your sword. No, hit me. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hit you. You over bit back. Ow! That's why I told you I wasn't gonna hit you. You hit back, Angelo Santangelo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so regular, I never did uh, foils, you know. You get tennis elbow from me. So, uh, but then I really took a, for a very long time did uh, regular straight up stage combat. And it was hard to go from uh, stage combat to regular fencing. Regular fencing, just so you know, small. You keep everything, you know, so that way you have small targets and get any time you fight. This is for any fighting. You fight. Um, the further out of the way you go, you do two things. You throw yourself off balance. You also open yourself up so the other people know that you're going to punch it. If I come up to you and I'm like, hey, how's it going, dude? You know I'm going to punch you in the head. Yeah. So, you know, you really want to, as Johnny Bosch would say, you always do something small. Bam! You know, straight up. Fencing is the same way. But when you do stage combat, you guys got to be able to follow what I'm doing. I mean, if I came up to her and went, ah! You wouldn't have seen what happened. Okay? On film, they can slow it down. They take it from four or five different angles. That, that's why in film you'll see something happen five times. I'm like, you know, the first time I'm like, Psh, and then it'll be, like, Psh, and then you'll see, Psh, and the music will be like, dun, 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 dun. so when I, when I do stage combat, they teach you you have to be big so people know I'm gonna pu I'm gonna punch this guy. Okay. But of course, the best thing I'm like, ah! and I'm like, you're dead. <laughs> you're freaking dead. So it was hard to go back and forth. So that's why I like getting into the rapier and dagger, because at least you have that extra dagger, that you, the small stuff. So I was never good at like attacking. I just could keep myself from getting killed. Yes? Have you tried buffering? Have I tried what? Buffering, bottling, patterning swords. Oh, yeah, but that's shh. We did it in high school. Because you, go, bah, 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 bah. you know what I did learn that's really cool? Uh, I did a production of Romeo and Juliet last year that I directed. Um, at Concordia University in Chicago. And I wanted my students to know an old form. I, I said it in 1920s, 30s, uh, New Orleans, late 20s, New Orleans. So I wanted them to have a street style of fighting that was more modern, but I didn't want to do just sword canes. It looks stupid. It looks like someone said, I know fencing. I don't know how people really fight, so I'll do sword canes. <laughs> so I had them have sword canes, but I also taught them, uh, I had them all go to the Bartitsu Institute in uh, Chicago. For those of you who are not familiar with Bartitsu, this is the style that they used in the new Sherlock Holmes films, where everything that you have with you in your, that you're holding, wearing, is a weapon. You know, you take your hat, you blind the guy, and then attack him with your walking cane, because everybody back then had walking canes that were civilized. Uh, so I did Bartitsu. That's really cool stuff. That's cool stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, style. What is that? Yeah, style. Um, yeah, he, he does some kind of stuff, but it's not really Bartitsu, but yeah, I love that Jackie Chan stuff. Next. What's your favorite Megazord? I don't have a favorite. Man, I'm Bulkin! Bulkin Skull! I don't care about Megazords! <laughs> I honestly would not know Megazord if it kicked me in the face except for the original one. So I'll say the original one. Uh, what got you into uh, education as a professor? Say it again, what trick would... What got you into education as a professor? Well, got me into education, my degree. No, um, <laughs> you know when you're an actor, because um, we always took our acting seriously, and I won't bore you with all the details, uh, but you kind of figure there's, at some point, there's only so much you can do as an actor. That's not entirely true, okay, but uh, you do feel that you want more and more challenges, um, and at some point, some people that are actors want you to go into directing, right? Um, I had the impetus that I wanted, I felt, I felt personally the need at some point to give back to the art by teaching people how to do it. That's kind of how I got into it. But again, I quit Power Rangers to go to college. I felt that I was becoming a bit of a, uh, a dick, quite frankly, in my personal life. Um, there was a little bit of sort of, we did, 
I remember what somebody when we were doing Power Rangers said, you'll never do anything as big as this. That's the truth. And so that kind of haunts you, and you say, well, what next? You know, it's hard to go to the audition for man number three when you've you know, been on a, a hit show, quite frankly. So um, I ran away to go to college. And I always thought I'd go back to acting. I thought I was taking a break. But while I was at college, um, I went to Franklin and Marshall College. I really loved the intellectual life. It was challenging. It was artistically fulfilling. I loved being in a room full of people and just throwing ideas at each other until four in the morning. I mean, to me, that was amazing. You know, if I could perpetuate that for the rest of my life, for God's sake, sign me up. Um, and then I realized, and at one point I thought I was going to be a history professor, uh, but then I realized, eh, I've done this for so damn long, um, I shouldn't leave that behind, that would be kind of stupid. Good question. Yeah. You recommended an album, a book, and a film. Ooh, album, a book, and a film. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a tough one. People always ask me those things in lightning rounds. I'm like, oh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, 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 well, let me get back to you on that one. Album, book, and film. Uh, okay, I'll have to come back, otherwise we'll slow it down. Yeah. Any ranger you could be, which one? Say again? Any ranger. Which like one? Be? Yeah. Which one? Which one? Uh, the, uh, mm, I'm, uh, terrible. Black ranger. Yes, thank you. Black ranger. I would be Walter Jones. Next. <laughs> uh, favorite Shakespeare play that you performed in? That I performed in? Uh, what did you say was your best performance? You know, I, I, Winter's Tale, I think. A winter scale. Uh, I, I mean, all, all the Shakespeare's that I've done, I like to revisit. I like to revisit Hamlet. I thought, meh, meh, meh. you know, Hamlet will never get right. Winter's Tale. For those of you not familiar with the Winter's Tale, it is the most beautiful of all the Shakespeare's. Not because of the language, because he wrote it. It's his penultimate play. First of all, it's the only time you can use penultimate in a sentence and use the only correct word. Okay. <laughs> uh, he was also a mature adult at that point in his life, and it, the first half of the play takes place with a king who is. Um, I think he's, tw uh, I know for a fact he's 28, I was 28 when I did it, um, who is insanely jealous about his pregnant wife and his best friend, who's another king, accuses his wife of having cheated on him, and that's how she got pregnant, um, only to recant that instantly, but she dies in childbirth. So for the rest of his life, he has to repent for this horrible um, sin that we all have. We all can be jealous of people. Who in this room has never been jealous ever? Liar! But that's the thing. He does something that we all could have done. Um, and I, to me, that was just such a powerful show. And in the last half of the play, he's 16 years older and has to deal with that and try to come to a mend. And I love doing that one. So, great question. Next! Next! If you could work with any actor or actors, who would you work with? Paul Schreier. Next! <laughs> Congrats. Is there a prank between you and Paul that maybe uh, went too far? Is there a prank between us? Uh, yeah, they all go too far. I mean, that's who they end up. I mean, psh. <laughs> this was one of those. Hey, you know, this is this is the minimum of what happens. So they all go too far. I promise. Destruction usually ensues, and fortunately, we have not been arrested. Next. Yes. Um, I've told the story a lot, so if anybody's recording this and putting it on YouTube, press stop because people will be bored of hearing it. Um, what happened was I got a call. Um, I, I said I was a four parts driver. I got a call um, while I was out on a run, and they said, You got to go to this audition. So I just took my leather jacket and went straight there. Grease, leather jacket, I looked like a derelict. Okay? Uh, they didn't have time really to, to email. Uh, not email. Oh my God. Perfect! <laughs> we had a thing called Fax. <laughs> or carrier pigeon. Uh, I didn't think I had time to look at those, uh, so I ran right down there. But they, they really didn't know what they wanted to do with skulls, so they asked me to improvise. And Paulie and I were always good at improvising. Uh, and at that point, I was so sick of the industry. I've only been doing it for like seven months at that point. You know, but when you're 18, seven months is a long time. Uh, so I'm like, I'm going to be a prick. <laughs> they're not going to give me the role anyway. You know, so I'm gonna just, I'm, they're going to remember me and ruin the day they brought me in their boardroom. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. And um, I remember I like drank the producer's coke and like jumped over their table and screwed up their whole boardroom. <laughs> um, and they're like... <laughs> so that was the first time. So Jonathan Zafora said, um, look, if, if we do not, I mean, normally actors here, don't call us, we'll call you. And Jonathan literally said, um, if we don't call you, 
call us, uh, which I had never heard before. And they said, they, they called me up and they said, come down tomorrow and have your call back with Paul Schreier. So um, I went down there and Paul was on the set uh, at the juice bar. He was in his bulk costume. Um, I don't think he was up in the ponytail. I don't remember, quite frankly. I think he decided that two days later. I don't remember exactly. Um, so he was in costume. I didn't realize it was a costume. Like, this guy looks like a prick. <laughs> no, sorry, he looked at me and was like, what's wrong with that guy? His excuse was he was in wardrobe. My excuse was, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul, like, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Um, and he read over my, my, my resume and knew that I had done theater. Paul had a theater background, too. So we literally, you know, just literally got to work. Hey, let's give it a shot. Let's, let's, let's work it through. And we worked it through for a couple of hours. And at one point, Paul turned to me and says, don't look now. No, we didn't, because, you know, everyone had left the set. And he's like, don't look now, but all the suits are looking at us. And everyone was gathered around. There was like five women, I don't even remember who they were, watching us. Work. It wasn't a. a, a it was not the camera interview. It was watching us work, uh, and that's how I got the part. And I'll go back even further. Um, this is you asked about which Rachel was the best looking. I said David Yost. I was up for Billy originally. <laughs> and I didn't know him. Um, wow. Six months before, I'd gone out on a casting call called Phantoms. It's always called Phantoms. And I went there. Um, I did my shot. Hi, my name is Jason Arby. I'm with Kelvin Arletta Agency. Thank you. <laughs> Next. That, that was it. Well, David was at the same casting call. I mean, I don't look like David. Okay. <laughs> I can't even try to look like David. Square job, beautiful, and all that stuff. Not me. Uh, so what happened was they took my name and they put it on file. Okay. They took my picture and put it on file. When they decided they were going to get rid of Bobby, who was playing the original Skull. They, they said, dude, we got to do this quick because we're going to shoot in five days. And they went back to that pile of rejects. <laughs> and I'm a reject. Um, and they went, uh, no, yes, no, 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 yes, no, yes, 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 no. Call these people right now. So that goes to show you between the work ethic working with Paul Schreier and the absolute yes, no, which one is already going to go yes. It shows you how it is, you know, opportunity 50%, you know, dumb freaking luck, and 50% just being prepared when that dumb luck falls in your lap. You know, my life would have been different. But it's so much better. Look <laughs> 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 at that. Hey, uh, first and foremost, I'd say I saw you guys over in the room for the day, and I'm definitely going to see you guys going back a huge chunk of my childhood, and I want to say thank you for that. Oh, you're quite welcome for taking your childhood. Looking back to the first season, um, is there anything you would have done Yeah, um, more auditions on our, on our off time. Um, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, we were enjoying being working actors. Uh, and to us, that was the pinnacle. You wanted to be a working actor. And there we were. Um, I think I want to push my agent to find more stuff. Um, on the set, no, we worked our asses off because we didn't have job security. We did exactly what we should have done. I mean, fortunately, Paulie and I saw the world the same way. We did not take it for granted that we had gotten on the show, um, of, that we were indispensable, or that we had to stick to the script. We decided to write our own script by what they gave us. And so we just worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked our asses off until we made ourselves indispensable. You know? Which also, by the way, Paulie would never say this. This is what makes Paulie great at everything he does. He just he will take the, the, the crappiest of crap jobs, tasks, whatever, and just say, This is where I start, and he will pull himself up through from bootstraps just by his sheer hard work because he has faith and he has talent, and all he's gotta do is work hard enough for that talent to be shown. Don't tell him I said that, though. Um, on the record, I think he's a freaking lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Next! What time are we doing? Yeah. Uh, anything you wanted to do, but they said they, they don't have the budget for it. Everything. I mean, we wanted everything. They, they had the budget for nothing. We literally had a producer once tell us, I do not have the budget for myself. <laughs> what? What? So apparently the producers weren't getting paid that first year. No, they worked. They were. Uh, that was a good joke, but they said they were. Next! Oh, 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 back there. And then we'll hit you. My favorite color? Is black a color? Black. black. Yeah. It's a ranger, it's a black. It's a Oh, pancakes or waffles? Chicken waffles. Yeah. That's yeah. all take. Yes. What is your best and worst camera? Best and worst? Oh, that's a good question. 
Um, the ones that stick in my, in my head are the earliest ones. Paulie and I um, were in, in uh, New York the first time in our lives um, for uh, a, the rap party for the movie. For whatever reason, they had it in Manhattan. We lived in Los Angeles and had just flown back from Australia. Go figure that one. Um, and we decided, again being stupid, we said, hey, let's go see the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> so we went out on a boat to go see the Statue of Liberty in February, which it went from, from uh, New York. Yeah. Good idea or bad idea? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so we're out there. It's iconic. Ridiculous. But as we're getting off, we got trapped on the bow of the ship by people taking pictures. And there was these two girls who were waiting. Uh, they, they were um, they were clearly um, Asian descent. We didn't realize they were like from Japan. Japan. Um, so they, they were like waiting back. They took our pictures as we're stuck on the bow of the ship, and we have to get. Midtown and it's rush hour, we have to go through Wall Street, and these girls are waiting in the back, and they finally come up and they just hand us their, their autograph book. We're like, okay, what's your name? They go, how do you spell that? Paul looks at me and goes, you don't understand a damn word I'm saying to you. They're like, it's like, you don't know who the hell we are, do you? They're like, it's like, let's just do it because everyone hears the damn, okay, go, bye. That was, that was probably one of the best. I love that one. Um, I can't remember who. Oh, Hanson! You remember the group Hanson from the 90s? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know this. There was a girl who was staying at the, at, at the hotel with us that we became uh, friends and close with. Um, and <laughs> we, we got in an elevator and these three kids come running in the elevator with their stupid little hair. And I'm like, what the hell? Then I get off the elevator. I'm like, what the hell is with those kids? And she's like, oh my god, I was Hanson! So Hanson was geeking out on us. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, dude. I'm totally sorry. Silver chair. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, ah! Silver chair actually, they actually had talent, those kids did. Yeah. I'm so thankful. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next. When you had to shave your head for, I believe it was when you were in the police academy, yes. how did you feel? Oh, that was hysterical. I hated it. Because I just become single, you know, when you're 21 years old and you get to be bald and not already not getting any. You know you're not getting any. But so I'm like, what, wait, what? <laughs> what? And at first we thought it was funny. And I thought they were going to give me like a flat top. I'm like, I didn't do a flat top. That'd be kind of cool. When they told me they were going to completely buzz it off, I'm like, ah! I like went up to the producer's office. I'm like, Tom, you can't have this bag out. I'm too afraid to be celibate. <laughs> so when they finally did it, I wish, I wish, I wish there are, I know there's some outtakes from that, but Paulie and I, it was the funniest moment we ever had, I think, because Paulie and I, they, they really did shave us, and then really had us look at each other, and we'd go, we look at each other, and we go, you know, we get done, and we look at each other, and go, and look how ugly that guy is, and we look in the mirror and go, ah, and that's what we look at them, and I, I look at Paulie, and he looks at me, and he screams because he realizes how ugly I am, and I realize how ugly he is. But that was the gig. That was how they had it scripted. It but, the, but because Paulie was so ugly, and I was so ugly, Paulie really turned like this. We couldn't get through it because we just thought each other was so freaking ugly. And I'm like, ah, ha, 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 smash, smash the mirror. <laughs> so the outtakes are never priceless. But it was true, I was celibate for about a year and a half. <laughs> yes. What's your best and worst time on set? Oh, uh, you know, we were looking, uh, we, there was many times we went into many things. Okay, many things came on to us many times. Uh, frequently when we were sick, we, we didn't, you can't have a day off. Day off, come on, dude. Um, and I remember a few times having to film while sick. Polly did this also. And ha there was one time, I think it was the first season or second season, in, in the wintertime, and just contrary to popular belief, it still does get cold in California um, in the wintertime. I mean, not in the 20s, but still upper 40s and overcast. It's cold when you have to jump into a lake. And you're sick with a fever. So that would have to be the worst. Best, uh, anytime we just laughed our ass. I mean, they were always great, you know. Anytime we had the full cast on, it was kind of fun. 
because it was it was kind of you know, the family coming together along with the drunk weird uncles. You know, <laughs> being there too, you know. Jason Frank. Uh, we keep talking about Jason Frank. Jason Frank is is I love that guy. He's so he's he's hilarious. He's fun to be with. Uh, we used to screw around together. Every time he does a panel, he tends to call me when he's on a panel. Um, because we really were friends. We call Frank. Yeah. 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 He may not answer because no. he'll no, he'll answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, Johnny Bosch too. Uh, Johnny and I became like really close friends to the point that when I went to college and he didn't hear from me for a little bit, he's like, "What happened to you?" <laughs> um, let's see. Frank, 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 Frank. Where is he? Frank. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. We'll call it Jason Frank. Hey. I'm next to the line. Yeah. You guys are enthralled. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do if nothing happens? suddenly I had a purpose in life. So they're like, okay, it's not the best thing in the world for your son to want to be an actor. <laughs> okay, fine. So when I actually got there were ecstatic, it was the only thing that I really wanted to do that I was actually good at. Uh, and in some ways they were like, of course, that was going to happen. Uh, they breathed a huge sigh of relief that it was that instead of jail. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Least favorite? Oh, I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> I am not going to answer that one. I'm not touching that one. 20 foot pole. Uh, yeah. No. no. Can we have a hint? No! No! Don't do that! No, quite frankly, here, i got to be honest. I, quite frankly, I mean, um, everyone who ever says, oh, such and such is a dick or such and such, I'm like, yeah, not to me, no. Must be something wrong with you. But I, I really, they really are like an extended family. I really freaking love to all of them. And some of them I was closer with than others. You know, that first cast, we were all pretty close. Um, I got even closer, though, with Johnny Bosch, um, uh, Catherine Sutherland uh, from the second cast, Karen Ashley and I have become really close the past couple years. Um, and Nakia Baris was on the list of people I contacted first when the baby was born because she kept saying, as you come to this, you're going to have a baby. Next time you come to a con, you're going to show me your baby. You know? <laughs> So I loved them all. I, I really had no, you know, and I miss, <laughs> I miss them too. So, next. Yeah. You know, that's the horrible thing. I don't really have great hobbies uh, uh, because <laughs> because I act because acting was my living, and then um, you know, uh, I love history. History is kind of my hobby. It's, you know, I like love reading history books. I love taking excursions to historical places. I uh, sometimes research. Uh, uh, historical figures. When I was on Power Rangers, I took uh, a little time off to go research Doc Holliday and write a book about him. Um, if anyone wants to see the final picture of Doc Holliday, it's never been published, and I have it. Um, I have a copy of it. Someone actually did a. Um, it, it, 
<laughs> this is my nerd stuff. People always ask me, what's your favorite anime? I don't know, but this is where I geek out. It's the best stuff. Uh, like, Doc Holliday died in a place called, uh, If you want to stay up to date my videos and live streams of both YouTube and Twitch, check out the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining. That's all for now, guys. Manjame out.